What's up, everybody? I'm Joby Butler, and this is Joby Butler Has a Podcast, Episode 3, and today I'm joined by one of my good friends, Mr. Jason Lodge. Big gulps, huh? Big gulps, huh, guys? Classic movie. Classic. Classic flick. Gotta love it. So what's going on, man? What's been going on? Uh, well, not a whole lot. A whole lot of everything, a whole lot of nothing at the same time. Yeah? Yeah. I hear you. Yes. Fun, life's funny like that. Right. It's been what ten years. It has been ten years since, since you and I. Other. Yeah, it's been ten years. We used to work at a small ass local TV station right. together, WHIZ, and uh, well, you had already been working there when I started. Yeah, were you there long before I started? Uh, I, I was there a total of seven years. You were there long enough. So I was long, long enough, enough, right? Yeah. So then we worked there for I want to say we worked there for probably like four years together. Yeah. And then it's the best job in the world. It, was, it, it just, was, it just, it just, it just paid <laughs> it was, like the worst job was, in the it, world. Yeah, exactly. That's so, what. Isn't that how most of them go, right? Yeah. The ones you enjoy, you're like, I can't do this the rest of my life, but I want to. Right. It's like me working in the movie theater. Incredible job. Go and start movies for an hour. And you and went then, and saw what three three hundred like eight hundred times. Yeah, I swear. like you watch that. I'm I don't, like you like you cook them in every day. Like, dude. I just watch this again. I just yeah. watch this again. Well, it'd be like I would I would discover new and new things every time I'd watch it. You know, like the cinematography. But I, that's how I am with things. It's like I get obsessed with them and drive them into the ground, and then I won't watch them for a couple of years, right. and then I'll get back into it. But yeah, the movie theater was like that. It's like I would love to do this the rest of my life. But it's like you're gonna be a 50 year old guy starting movies. <laughs> now now they don't even have a projectionist. That's what they called it. It's like you know I'd reel the reel the film right. into the projector it's and start it. Now, isn't it? And yeah, it's digital now, which fucking kind of takes away from experience for me. Right. You know, because it was like fun, actually. You would get the, the film in these canisters and actually have to splice them together. And it was like, God, it was it was a great job. But then I would like, you would have a sheet of when the movies start, and you would have to go down through this long-ass hallway and start <laughs> every one of them, you know, on time. And you'd have to sit there for a couple minutes and make sure, like, you know, the... Um, the screen was okay and there was a, there was nothing blocking it and uh, that the audio was good and then you would move on to the next one. And you did that for an hour, but then you would get an hour of just checking on all the movies. So I would just pick one and just watch it. And unfortunately, when I worked there, the worst movies came right. out. It was like superhero movie, epic movie, you know, those parody movies. Right. They were terrible. Sex in the City came out. A bunch of awful ones. Terrible. But there were some other good ones. Forgetting Sarah Marshall came out during that time. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Speed Racer. I always like Speed Racer, and everyone hates it. Um, and then The Dark Knight, obviously, was the big one. That was, like, really one of the real me reasons I got a job <laughs> right. in the movie theater. But, yeah, that's a fun job. But, yeah, they never pay a lot. No. And yeah, now that job's not even around. But then when we quit at Wiz, you ended up joining what? Was yeah, what I... Uh, I left there and joined the army. Joined and I joined the army at the age of at the age of thirty. So I went in as the, as that old man. You went in with the wisdom. Yeah, uh, which is kind of a, it was it was kind of an awesome thing because nobody fucked with me. All right, like, yeah. like, well, like he how understands. Much, how, he understands how, like how to live. How old were like the other people like in your? Well, when, were they like mostly kids? Well, when I went to uh, basic, I had a lot of kids who, when they finished had to go finish their senior year of high school. No shit. Yeah. Really? So it, so I had a lot of like young kids and it's just like, come on guys, just shut your mouth <laughs> and let's just finish this because it's the easiest thing in the world. So you, you guys have just, to do just, that, just, that like, fucking crazy ass, um, you have to get pepper sprayed and all this shit, right? Not pepper sprayed, yeah. but... Um, oh, you had to go to the, to the gas cha- chamber. The gas thing. chamber thing, right? Yeah. How is that? So it sucked. I, I, I had imagine, to do that right? do that twice. Once in a basic, and then mm-hmm. they went, like a couple years right. later. The uh, the first time, uh, it was pretty rough because you just weren't expecting it, and then and then you want to try to like just like hold your uh, breath, right? But then you can, but then but then, but then, but then you then, breathe in heavy. exactly. Yeah. So then so then you take that that really big big like breath, oh, and then even worse. and it makes it worse. Snot just coming out everywhere, and so you, you just, can't breathe. So looking and, back, it's like you should take little breaths, right? right? Damn, and, yeah, uh, I can imagine that just that big gulp of air that you get, and it's you're fucked after that. So then, when I did it a few years la- uh, later with with like my u- unit in Alaska, we uh, I was one of the first ones in, and the people who were running it, I guess, thought that their the amount of t- tablets that, that, that they had mm-hmm. was for 
was per rotation of guys. Oh, okay. But but in a reality, that was for the entire day. Mm. So they put an entire day's worth in on us. Oh no shit. And but but surprisingly, that was like it was a lot easier. Like I had my mask off and able to breathe and. Mm. So I you had to I, do if that. I, if I just got used to it and learned like how to breathe with it. You built up a tolerance. Hopefully. So you, but like it, was, you, it was it was it was maybe it was, was pretty that. miserable at that, that <laughs> yeah. first time though. I'll tell you. Maybe that. it was part of that uh, super soldier serum they gave. Right, us. right. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. I've seen like um, I don't remember what it was, but it's, it was something I watched on TV where they did that to the, all the incoming uh, people that had joined, and I was like, oh, this looks fucking brutal. <laughs> and they couldn't even stand up. It sounded a lot more. It looked a lot more painful. It sounds like you fucking balled up and fucking got through it. But these guys were like fucking crying. Oh and yeah, shit. you see, it's ridiculous. It's, Cause like you have like, so it in most times it's like some of the biggest guys. Oh, I'm sure. Who are just they go down. Everyone, yeah. everyone is just all hands on, on their on their knees. Right. Literally just snot. Mm. Foot. foot, foot right. Yeah. Just trying to get that mouth. fucking like burning shit out of their. Probably in their nose and shit. Yeah, that shit looks brutal. But uh, you ended up uh, stationed in Alaska, right? I did. Yeah. What was that like? It was. So everyone's like, "Oh my goodness, you got some like you like you had to go go to Alaska." And I was like, "Alaska is beautiful. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's a it's it's an amazing place." My my where buddy did you ben, where did where are you stationed at? I was there? in uh, Fort Wainwright, which is Fairbanks, which is kind of like right dead center of other state. Gotcha. Um, and it's absolutely a gorgeous place to live. The summers got up to 92. So it's actually really warm. Right. And the sun is up like 11 and a half hours a day. So you can be out in the summertime and do whatever That's you want. That's crazy. It's just the state bird. It's a is, lot of day drinking. The, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the state bird there is like a uh, mosquito. Those things, <laughs> those things are they're, they're ginormous. Huge? Really? Yeah. And, and there's just hundreds of them. You go for like, for like like just for like a bike ride and it's just like, bam, 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 bam. Uh, but yeah, that sounds you, miserable in itself. But you're like you get if you're yeah, I'm sure you get used to it. But if but if you're an outdoor per person, you can right. go out and do anything you want, whenever you want. It's just it's great. Yeah. But then you have the winter time, where you have like two and a half hours of daylight. Right. You you, you literally watch the sun come up. It kind of just comes up just a little bit, and, then it, and then it goes right back down. Yeah, it's almost like the sun's like no, nah, not today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> And then it, then during during that time, it's just, cold and it's miserable. Well, I just realized that I, every Monday morning I'm like the Alaskan sun in the right. winter. Like I get up and I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to do this, but I, you know, I, I have to get up and go to work. That's right. that sounds miserable in itself. Waking up to only like two hours of sunlight, because especially in the winter, like yeah. here, you know, it gets dark. It gets dark sooner. I would I would go wake, wake up for work and it would still be dark out and then I get to work and that's when the sun's coming up and then I'm inside all day right. and then yep. by the time I leave it's dark again. Right. So I can't imagine it only being two hours of fucking sunlight. Yeah, it's it was like ten thirty to like one thirty ish, uh, from from when it started to when it was gone, uh, and then it's just like the average like temps like negative forty five, uh. which. Sounds terrible, but, but there it's, it's probably a little bit different. It it, it, it is a different cold because right. you don't have the moisture in the air mm-hmm. and you don't have the wind. Yeah, because so, everything's dead. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, not being in other military there mm-hmm. in in other winter times, great because uh, you can dress properly and you can go in and out whenever you uh, feel like it. And then the military, they tell you how long you're going to be outside. They may give you proper stuff to wear but right. when you're out there 8, 10, 12 hours at a time then <clears throat> it just becomes miserable yeah so what did you actually like what were you stationed to do out there uh, I was like a medic. take me through like oh a medic okay. yeah so uh, so when we weren't deployed it was straight tra- training of training our newer guys mm-hmm. different medical procedures on how to do do different things uh we, then we would do three week long field like field problems, where it's negative forty five, and they're like, "All right, you're gonna spend three weeks outside. You're gonna live outside, shit outside, eat outside, everything." Nice. And making you adapt. Yeah, it's it, they wanted us to be Arctic tough. All right. Which is. Is that was that that was a slogan? Arctic tough. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Because we were 
the whole brigade was called the Arctic Wolves. Mm-hmm. So you've heard of uh, uh, Tropic Lightning based off of Tropic Thunder and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's Tropic. Well, we were part of the 25th, which is stationed in Hawaii, mm-hmm. Tropic Lightning or whatever. And we were the cold weather you're the counterpart. You're the to that. cold weather branch. So well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So did you enjoy it? Did you like doing it? I, I I really enjoyed being in the military. It was it was it was a blast. I loved it. Uh, I just didn't like the way it was ran. Now, how it, long were there you? Because was a lot of stuff where it was uh, seemed like a lot of higher ups were doing things to just add bullet points to their resume type of thing. Gotcha. Uh, I was in four, just the basic, just like four like four years and it was like ah, I've seen enough I've done enough you had your experience yeah so I was, I was ready to go with that uh, and then on, on, on our field on our field problems we were a striker brigade so it's kind of like a tank without wheels pretty they can be like pretty sweet at times yeah sounds pretty but cool. they have these hatches on the vehicle um when you're in a moving moving vehicle, somebody has to be out of the hatch at all times. Mm-hmm. But when it's negative forty five and you're doing yeah, and, fuck that. And then and then and then you have to go from our base to the training area, so you're all, all like <laughs> on on the interstate, fucking wind burning shit. <laughs> yeah, in your doing face. doing like doing like fifty, and negative four, just like just like forty five degree weather, and you're from like waist up. That sounds just brutal. Just ha- hanging out. That sounds brutal. Uh, but that but that led led to this one time where we had some people. At, you know, all the, all the people in the hatches were, would wear their, uh, uh, you know, like a headgear and everything. That way mm-hmm. they can communicate to, to everybody. Right. And, and this guy came over and he's like, he's like, hey, I see, f- <laughs> he's like, I see a retarded horse over here. And everyone stops and looks back. Well, he, say, he saw a retarded horse. He, he saw a retarded horse. Yeah. And, everyone, and everyone, like, looked at him like, a what? He was a retarded horse. Well, how do you know? It's, how do you know? It's, how do you know this horse is mentally challenged? <laughs> and he, and so everyone just like lost it. And then and he's like, "No, look!" And he points over to it. And it's a female moose. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so, no, I think, so I think you're mentally. I think you're mentally challenged. I don't think that's the horse. <laughs> so, so you can kind of understand. This horse has antlers. <laughs> well, well, the, well, but they don't have right. The right. 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 So and that's how he got it. That mistaken. Right. So. I can kind of understand, but it's still, it's like, come on, bro. That's incredible. Have you never seen? I feel like you. I feel like I'd be able. To, most people would be able to tower. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't think There's most people. Yeah, people out that's there. a good point. Just, I'll give them a pass. Just like, uh, like, like when I moved back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of him seeing that moose and thinking it was a horse in general for one, <laughs> but then saying, "No, it's a retarded horse." Oh, god, that's hilarious. So, so when I came came uh, came back to Ohio. So I had my Alaska license plates and everything. Right. And I was in, in a uh, gas uh, st- like station, and uh, and these two w- women who were wearing scrubs mm-hmm. or nursing, you know, get right. up, whatever. Uh, they uh, they saw the license plate and they didn't know that I was the one who who was driving the car. So then they were having a conversation, and one of them said, "Do you?" Th- Asked, do you think that he drove here? <laughs> and the other one, and the other one said, "Dead serious, no. It's not one of those underwater cars." That uh, was no that, that way. Was, so, so, so that was the exact time. When, well, first of all, when, your when car was, is out there, so yeah, you right. definitely did drop there. <laughs> that's, that's number one. Yeah. So, ex- right. And then so 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 the two things about just like just like about that was one. That she thinks that Alaska is an island, right? Which a lot of people do. A lot of people do, right? Because it's always down by the. Well, with all them retarded horses down there, right, how exactly. do these retarded horses get there? Do you think they gallop <laughs> there? <laughs> and then, and then, and then two. Believes that underwater cars exist, because that that was the exact same time when the Fiat commercial like came out, and right. was being. Being it like like introduced to the underwater car, right? Where they where they showed it jiving from Italy, going underwater. And right. People were like, oh hey, look at this fish. And so so it's like, so so it's like so I just I just looked at it. Oh him, my god. And it's just like, 
Just in straight disbelief. Like, are you kidding me? Or like, oh, look at this fish. Oh, that sounds like a I've never seen that commercial. I'm going to have to look that for commercial ago, yeah. up. Fiat making them underwater. This underwater car is coming, coming to America <laughs> by store, man. They get terrible gas mileage. <laughs> I haven't seen one. I have to look. Like, the only other the only underwater car I've seen are, you know, from like James Bond and Austin right. Powers, you know. Those are the only ones. Makes you wonder, though. I'm sure they're coming out with shit like that. Oh, they have right? to. Yeah, they're always coming out like the newest, just insane. It's like, you know, like um, we had talked it before, like on the podcast about, you know, like aliens and stuff. And I know like the amount of things that they're and they're creating or testing from just like Area 51, right. like aerial stuff is insane. It's like makes you wonder what are they what are they making like ground wise? Right. You know what I mean? Have well, you then, seen... and well, well, then when you have uh, people like Elon Musk. Yeah. Like, that guy's a straight genius. Have you seen the, the Tesla truck that they're coming out with? No, I've not seen that yet. It looks fucking crazy. It's just, like, this huge, big, boxy thing. I mean, it, it looks crazy, but that guy's insane. That guy's yeah. a genius. Have you seen the, um, they're talking about doing, like, the underwater, or the, not the underwater, the um, underground tunnel system, like, the, the road <laughs> system. So, basically, um, what it is is um, they have, like, your car can enter like this little like lift thing, but it lowers your car down into these tunnels. Really? And it's on a track and it sends your fucking car. I don't know if it would be your car, if this car is already, you know, pre built or whatever on it, but it's supposed to be this insane thing and it's underwater or it's underground. And he's wanting to build it in California. Hmm. I don't know how far along they've they've gotten on it, but apparently that's like his next his next thing that he's working on. It's like, Jesus, this guy's like on another level. Yeah. yeah. Did you see him on Joe Rogan's podcast? I did. Smoke some weed. Their um their uh, stocks like plummeted the next day. I don't, right. think they, I don't think they went down like drastically, but I know that there were people like wanting him to, you know, resign. Which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's his fucking company. Right. You know? And it's like, hey, look what this guy's doing. I think we'll let him. I think we'll let him smoke weed on Joe Rogan's podcast. Right. You know, it's like good luck with the company if you're not if you don't have him. Exactly. Ask Apple how that worked without Steve Jobs. <laughs> you know, it's like they fucking brought him back because they're like, this this is the guy. You have to have that guy with the vision. And yeah. If if not, what are we even here for? I said that, that's that's also how you, you you you'll get like a mad scientist. Yeah, you have to have the mad scientist. Otherwise, otherwise. If he's not doing doing good with like just, like with you, right? Then who knows what type 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 of crazy shit that he's gonna yeah he's gonna start to doing. I mean, he's created those rockets that that literally land, land themselves. They land themselves. Unbelievable. Yeah, if, if you guys haven't seen that, it's strongly suggest looking that up on YouTube. That's actually, that shit's crazy. That's actually my uh, background screen on my computer. Really? Of of the two land like it's land. crazy. Like when they did the SpaceX launch and people like. We're seeing it, like, driving, thinking it was, like, an alien invasion. Because it did look like some fucking alien was right. landing. Yeah, that guy's on another level, man. It makes you wonder, like, it's like, man, I want that guy kind of working for our fucking military intelligence. Yeah. Creating some of that shit, you know? You, you get into, like, the UFO stuff at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> like, I even really had to think about that well, one. Well, it's like, I don't... I, I really enjoy like following and everything. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you and, believe and Do you believe in aliens? Yes. I think you have to because right? because you can't you can't be naive enough to think that we're we the, the only, only ones. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have to think there's something bigger. Right. Right. And it's like you know, plants they're a living organism. It's like they exist. Right. Animals exist. We exist. Why is it crazy to think that something else exists? Right. Yeah, alien stuff is crazy. Um, I watched this crazy documentary not too long ago. Have you ever heard of Bob, Liz Bob Lazar? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that documentary? The new one that came out. Uh, it's called. Not the new. I think it came out. It came out this past year. It was called. Um, I think it was called Bob Lazar Flying Saucers and UFOs or something like that. He was that. a guy who like worked with at like every like fifty one or something. Yeah, like that. he actually came out um, in like I think it was nineteen eighty five. He was doing a. Um, he was doing like he was on like a news station. They were doing a a um, this whole series um, on this guy came forward and said, "I work at Area Fifty One, 
it's a real thing. And at that time, I don't think it was called Area 51. It was called something else. But people, like this had been a rumor about this Area 51 right. thing. And when he came out, he did this news program, but they darkened his face and everything. And he ended up divulging like all these things that only people who would actually work there would know. Right? Well, then they found out and they, they fired him. And um, he took all these people to this like certain uh, site in the fucking desert that you wouldn't even, you wouldn't go out there if you didn't know that there was going to be something out there. He took out these groups of people and said, oh, they do their test flights out there. And sure enough, they were doing their test flights out there with like these crazy lights in the sky and stuff. Really? Yeah. And so, you know, they've tried to, there was actually a couple of attempts on his life. Well, I can only imagine. Yeah, but he ended up, he eventually came out and, you know, said, I'm Bob Lazar because he wanted that to be like, I want to be in the public eye, so if something does happen right. to me. Yeah, but that documentary it, is fascinating. I heard the where he was, like, describing, like, years ago, like, in, like when it, he first, like, like brought everything out, that, like, mm -hmm. they had hand scanners. Yes. Yeah, that and, was another one. And the thing with the hand scanner was it measured, like, the lengths of your bones in your hand. Yes. And everyone's like, Oh come on! But that's like an actual thing. Yeah, that was the thing that they um, they actually ended up they were they used for um, certain sections at Area Fifty One that they had found apparently that he claimed was from alien intelligence, and then you know years later it actually they actually came they came out with them and showed them. So it was like okay, well then clearly he worked there because how the fuck would he have known right. about any of that? And there's been a couple of other things he's come out and said that they've ended up coming out and, you know, proving that he, he was right about. But there's other things, too, about where he, um, I can't remember what college it was, but he claimed to have went somewhere. Maybe it was MIT or somewhere, but there's no record of him ever attending there. Because so I'm like, oh, like the government couldn't have wiped, like, his entire existence. It's like they, they could have easily done that. Because he apparently tried to, he claimed that he worked at, um, I can't remember what it was, but it's like this leading uh, science um, lab. I think it's in Texas or maybe Arizona somewhere. And he started there, and that was how he got on at Area 51. Well, they came out and said, we've never had anybody of that name ever been employed here. And somebody mm -hmm. found... A directory from years later that had Robert Lazar in the directory. That's a pretty yeah. weird last name. Not yeah. it's not a very common it last isn't name. Smith. Yeah, yeah, it's not Bob Smith. Yeah, but his name was in a directory, so it's like, oh, that's weird that his name's in the directory as an employee, but you're claiming he's never worked there. Right. But they get through all this stuff in the documentary, and it was fascinating. I follow the uh, the director. His name's Jeremy Corbell, and uh, yeah, the documentary was fascinating. I watch it one night, and the one guy they get to narrate is Mickey Mickey Rourke. It's like that's who I want telling me about <laughs> aliens. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one though. Yeah, that and uh, we talked we talked briefly about uh, aliens, and I think the first episode that and ghosts. You ever get into the ghost hunter stuff? I love ghost adventures because I love I love the guy. Did you try to do a ghost thing one time? Didn't you when no. we worked? Or you were talking about it, or somebody was talking about there, it. There was, uh, we had a guy at a, at Wiz. At, oh, that's right, at Wiz. Yeah, who, was, who was into that, uh, and was going to go do, do, do some of that stuff. But yeah, I, I, I would actually love to go do that. I, I think, think it'd be I fun. Think, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun. I would, yeah, absolutely. I would go with a couple of friends. Yeah. I wouldn't believe in any of it, but I would go. It would probably creep me out. Some of the things there, would probably creep there me out. There are some, some, some like things that, they're like, they're like you do see. We, well, we should like, set up what? a time where we can do a ghost hunting trip. And I will go record it, and we'll do that as part of the podcast. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be amazing. That'd be fun, right? I think, who was the guy that was it? Was it Phil? Phil. Was it Phil? Okay, yeah. I'm still friends with Phil. So yeah. we'll see. Maybe if he's still into it. I don't know if he is anymore. But, yeah, maybe we can do that or something. I know that there's places around here where you can sign up and yeah. do it for a night. I know that you can do it at uh, the Mansfield like, like Reformatory. Yeah, that one would creep me out. Because that one's fucking, that, one, that place is creepy. And that place is massive. It is massive. I was there last year, like last summer. Do you ever do the um, the haunted mansion or whatever they do there? Uh, Not the mansion, but the haunted tour or whatever. No, but I've I, but I've talked to somebody who has been there for for, for that, that haunted thing, and then 
been there also at a separate time, uh-huh. and 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 they, and they said that it's a lot creepier if they would just turn out the lights. Mm. Also, said, the lights are on. Well, that's probably a safety thing, right? Probably and so, so they so they so they said that all the stuff that they're that they're doing just cheeses the experience mm-hmm. up. They said if you would just put us in in uh, another prison, just lights out, it would be terrifying. Um, somebody else too. I uh, I think I read it uh, on, on Facebook. It said uh, it might have been last year, maybe the year before. They said the line was there was just so massive oh, yeah, that imagine. they waited like hours just to go in. I ain't about that. Right. I don't like. I don't like doing. The one time I ever went to a fucking haunted house, I made fun of everybody in there. I made fun of everybody in there. The one was like a, like a mom who had killed her kids, and I just was like, "That's why you practice abstinence." I was telling the person working there, and she got pissed. And my friends, I was making my friends laugh the whole time. I was literally roasting every room we went into. I roast somebody, and they got pissed by the end of it, and. When we walked out at the end, you think it's over, right? It's never over. We walk out, and all of a sudden, we hear this fucking chainsaw start up. And this guy comes out from behind one of the walls, and he chases us. And we <laughs> we run out. like At the end, we just ran out into this road. Well, he ran after us, and he, you know, he doesn't chase after me very far. And he missed the curb. <laughs> so he f- he fell into the road and the chainsaw went skidding across the road and it was like you know like that scene in Family Guy he was just going ah, like holding his knee and we fucking died laughing I was like that is the perfect ending <laughs> to this haunted house that's the last time I've been to a haunted house it's like that's I'm never gonna no, top you're not that, gonna get that back. so why even try right yeah fucking haunted house are funny the people I. I would I would love to be an actor in a haunted house just once. It, it would it would definitely be a, a fun a fun experience. Right, just a, I always thought the a haunted a haunted um, house would be the perfect place to actually murder somebody. You think about it, right? Everyone's like, "Oh, this is fun. It's just a joke until they actually get stabbed." Right. And then you would be like, "Who did it? Which which one of these workers did it?" But you don't actually work there. You just snuck in. You're acting like a worker. Creeping out a lot of people <laughs> that are watching. This guy's thought about this. No, I thought that's how you would get away with one, right? That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, it's creepy. That's you, why I also don't trust him because my luck would be I would be the one that would be murdered. Do you want to? You want to go to haunted? I feel like now? now that I've put this out there, somebody is going to murder me, and then we'll look back on this tape, and it'll become a legend. Speaking of, speaking of murdering people. Sure. Oh yeah. That's, speaking. Right. That's let's carry on this topic. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, this all that's always a good starter. Speaking of murdering people, you're gonna know like like where, like where I'm going with this. So. Okay. Our first time seeing Thirty Seconds to Mars. Okay. Great concert. Right. Cleveland. It was in Cleveland. <laughs> oh, I know exactly where okay, you're going. Yes, with this. Okay. Right, yeah, it's a great yes, so, story. Uh, I don't. It, that was I don't know how many years. Just like that years would have been in two. Th- oh, I don't know. So. We saw somewhere on on the on the internet. I was I think it was before Craig like Craigslist even. Yeah. Um, that yeah, somebody you, had you were somewhere somebody had, for... had had two extra tick tickets yes. and we're like oh yeah we got to go. So we, I think we, it was wasn't it on the forum? Uh, maybe it was on their forum maybe. or something. I don't know when people had, when bands still had forums. Right. Uh, so then we met this this girl who who's in Cambridge, which right. Is, so like, she didn't rather, live too far away. Right. You lived there at the time. Right. So. Uh, we went to go meet her, and the three of us would then ride, just like, just like ride up there. Right. And I don't remember. Were you in the front seat, or was she, um, or did she sit? I don't remember. Okay, no, it was well, maybe she you. Was, I, you were in the front seat, or I mean, she was in the front seat to begin with because, like, you guys met before me, before yeah. me, right? And then I met you guys at like your house or something. And then. Uh, <laughs> and I just remember where. Well, you're, first of all, you're, you're to the, preface the story, it was like a level three or level two snow. Right. It was cold as fuck out. Right. And then you're back, just like in the back seat, and you're putting on your uh, gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like already in the car, and the car's <laughs> yeah, warm. She was in the front and seat. And she's like. What are you doing then? And then you're like, well, it doesn't leave fingerprints when you murder somebody. Yeah. 
Uh, I said, I said, no, I started laughing. I was putting them on. I had these like leather gloves and I was putting them on. <laughs> and the way I put them on, first of all, anybody that puts gloves on like this is either getting ready, you're either getting ready to fucking give somebody, get up somebody's ass and test, the, test their prostate or, or you're getting ready to kill somebody, right? So I put them on like this and she's like, what are you doing with those? And I said, I said, calm down. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to murder you or anything. And then I put him on again, and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, they just don't leave fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor girl is probably like petrified. She was fun though. She's a sweetheart. Yeah, I ended Kelsey. up. Yeah, she, I ended up going to, to with uh, her right before that. Uh, I, I I like joined the army. Uh, That's kind of like my last you know thing where I, right. I just went and traveled and saw the band like four or five times. Yeah, like, they were oh, great live. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a fan of what they're doing now. No, stuff. it's terrible. I don't even think, I think that last one I listened to, I'm like, is there is there anybody even playing fucking guitar on this track? <laughs> like it, it was. I'm like, this is not like, like I understand bands have to progress right. and keep things interesting and you know try to try new things, but it's like, fuck, this is not the same band I heard. Right. Which is fine. It's just not my thing. He's uh. I think his ego has definitely gone got gotten to him, which is then affected like. Well, he uh, his ego could take a break then after that fucking Joker performance because that was right. Dog oh shit. Oh my goodness! I thought it had the possibilities of being so good. Could have been, yeah. And you know, it's like I I knew he he has that Heath Ledger thing where he's like, he, he can be the heartthrob, but he can also be you can tell he's got that dark side right. to him that he could be really creepy with it, right? Right. But. Yeah, that movie came out, and it was just like, oh, God, what is this? Yeah. And then have you seen the, uh, they came out with like a, a couple of teasers for, they're doing, it's not like Suicide Squad, but it's the female version of it. It's all females. Hmm. So it's, um, like, it's mainly about Harley Quinn. So Margot Robbie's coming back. Oh. They came out like this little preview, and it looked like a fucking H&M commercial. It looked like, it looked like they were selling a fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is this? And it, it just looks so bad. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. She was great in it. But uh, I thought I thought you were going to go with the newest Joker movie that they're coming out with. I think that one looks sweet. Walking Phoenix and that yeah. is just... Again, it's they're exploring... Uh, he's insane. My other buddy and I, and you and I used to talk about this a lot because The Dark Knight came out when you and I were working together. Um, my favorite Batman movie is Batman Begins. I think it's better than the other two as a movie. Right. It's not as big budget. You know, like the second one is good, but it's good because of Heath Ledger. Right. Like every other Batman scene, I'm like, it's fucking boring. Where's Heath Ledger at? Right. You know, the first one, it's like the bad guy's Liam Neeson, you know, and it's not like a huge big budget movie and it's the origin story, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's too boring for some people. Right. But this Joker movie looks like it's going to be pretty much like the Batman Begins. Exactly. And that's what I love about it. It's like, all right, I want to see the origin story. And Joaquin Phoenix again is a fucking, he's, he's freaky in some movies. He's just crazy in real life. Yeah. And that's, um, cr the crazy thing about that movie is it's directed by Todd Phillips that did the, the Hangover movies. Oh, the really? The new Joker movie, yeah. And um, Martin Scorsese's direct, or, uh, producing it. So it's like, there's some good names to it, but it's got Robert De Niro in it. I'm not a huge De Niro fan. For like the past 15 years all those movies have been dog shit they've been terrible yeah he's like he had he his has good its moments run. well okay so like um let's see what it was the one movie i watched and i was like oh was it dirt bad grandpa or dirty grandpa i get the one i get the two confused oh uh, yeah I what was zach efron yeah i'm like yeah oh, this movie is so bad it's terrible but like you also have to look at like Goodfellas and Casino and Which, Raging Bull and like all those movies Taxi are great. Driver. Taxi Driver and Mean Streets, all those movies are phenomenal. Yeah. So it's like, all right, he's had it to front. He's already he's a legend. Right. But it's like, I wish he would do some more edgier type stuff, like as an older actor. Right. You know what I mean? He's also in a Tarantino movie for like five minutes or <laughs> ten minutes or whatever. So, all right, hey, let's uh, let's take a quick break. And we'll be back right after this. Right. We've a large assortment of freshly made sandwiches. How about a pizza? None better anywhere. Sizzling hamburgers grilled to your taste. 
mouth-watering chili dillies. Crispy hot fresh french fries. It's refreshment time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. And we're back um, from our sponsor break. It's lovely. Yeah, I love all these sponsors. I have great, great sponsors. Hot dogs, pizza. Um, I need to get some new ones. Think about some other things I can do. Ice cream would be a good one. Um, Speaking of ice cream. Okay. That's okay. good. Uh, if you could be any flavor of ice cream, it could be concrete, grass, okay. strawberry, pussy, whatever. Right. It could be any flavor. Interesting. Pussy flavored ice cream. You know, <laughs> what flavor would you be and why? Oh, okay. I like this one. That's a good question. I... It would be, okay, it would be the smell of your house on Christmas morning when you wake up. That's what it would be. Because okay. you'd be like, oh, I don't know what it would taste like. <laughs> I don't even know if it would taste good. But you would be able to hold the cone there and you'd be like, this smells like Christmas morning. Okay. You know, and I think that would get a lot of people to buy it. Because if you could have that feeling and that smell on a hot summer day, the this would be a great day, right? You'd start off a great day. I'm going to start off with this fucking Christmas cone. That's That'd what it'd be called, the Christmas cone. There you go. What, what it's would a money be? maker. Uh, mine would be as vanilla as my answer. <laughs> but the reason behind it'd that be is clear. it would be clear. It would just be clear. Well, that'd be, it'd be, it would be vanilla. Right. Just because, but, which is a stupid answer, right, for this. But everything goes with vanilla. That is true. Like, you can put that on cake and pies and you can add shit to it. Pussy. <laughs> that, that's that? just, that'd be a nice little fun, fun time. Yeah, right that'd there. be a weird setup, though. Hey, listen, sweetheart, let's get the bedroom. I got some vanilla. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. That's a good question, though. What, what would be some other good ones? There would be. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm not happy with mine. All of a sudden, I feel like I feel like it could have been better. But I'll settle for. I'll See, settle. I, with I've it. asked some uh, people, and they're like, "Cool, like, give me like." Rocky Road Mint. And yeah, like, and you're like, and yeah, like, no. It's like, well, you're catering to one person. Yeah, well, you're, that's funny, though. That you, I love the fact that you brought up concrete as a possible answer. It tastes like concrete. <laughs> Who the fuck's like, can't get one of them, con them concrete cones? There's <laughs> another one, concrete cones. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, though, because I feel like I'm going to be thinking about this for the, all week now. It does. Like, like, what could I, what flavor could I be? So, uh, so I'm, I uh, deliver mail. So I walk around right. uh, actually like 17 and a half miles every day. Yeah. It's a shit, shit ton of walking. It's good for the calves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But all that shit that you buy from, from, from like China Yeah. comes in a really thin white packaging plastic bag. Yeah. We know you know what, what you buy. Oh, like, yeah. like, cause, cause, cause they, like, cause like there's a lot you. of times where someone's like, like, hey, Jason, Catch and they throw it and you and you catch it and it's like wah 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 and wah, you're like wah, that's wah. a shake weight or it's a giant dildo. God damn it! <laughs> Thanks guys. And throw it back. back. So just know that if you order a dildo online, the mailmen are playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> throw like, it around. Like, not, we should clarify. You're not playing with it. You're tossing it around like a couple boys in the backyard. And it's just like, and it's just like it's like all right. I, I don't know what this person looks like at this address. And you're like, I never want to know. Yeah, you're like, you're yeah. like, I hope you're hot. <laughs> I hope you're hot. Otherwise, well, I'm done just delivering I'm, your mail. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're never going to get a, another goddamn letter from me again. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. What are some of the, the I can only imagine the shit that people. That people oh, you get some, some weird, some weird stuff. Plus, <laughs> plus you, you uh, know when people break up, when people get, oh, get, yeah, get divorces yeah. and. One know, of my buddies. Uh, all tendencies. One of my buddies, he, uh, he delivers packages and. He uh, he sent me a he sent me a picture one day and it was it was just a box and it wasn't you know it didn't it wasn't wrapped up with anything and it said on there it was a rice cooker and the name of the person that he was delivering it to was like James Wan and he was like way to feed into the stereotypes <laughs> he's like of course Mr Wan's ordering a rice cooker <laughs> <laughs> and I was like that's that's a little offensive. My friend, but we laughed about it. We shared a good laugh because you have to laugh about everything, right? 
You, you have to. If you didn't laugh, if you didn't, if you couldn't laugh about the dark things in life, you would go fucking nuts. Which to. is exactly what people are doing. Now. Oh yeah. Well, when we worked at the television uh, like station and everything, mm-hmm. you have a lot of horrible stories. Yeah, oh, yeah. So like, you need you we, need to squirrel water skiing every now and then. Right. So we would always come up with the most offensive things to say because right. if you don't take yourself out of that out of that moment yeah then then it's gonna fuck with you yeah in, 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 in the same way being like when we were, like when i was deployed and seeing a lot sure seen a lot of shit sure. that if you didn't joke around about it then it does it, it'll, yeah it'll, like it really messes with, with you. you yeah and you can't live life like that no you know because like you said there's a lot of bad shit that happens every day and then so bring it back to, you know, walking around like all day long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Have plenty of time to think. It looks like, so I think of all kinds of weird shit. Sure. Because what else am I going to do, right? Right. I like where this is going. Um, so a couple of different, different things. Like, so if you had any amount of money, you know, you, you just won the Powerball. Unlimited money. Unlimited money. Okay. So if you had a dream car... Like like what well, like what would that, that well, my that dream, dream car, car would be? And it can be, I'd be an underwater Fiat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I would love to drive around a tank. I'd love to drive around, but you have to also tell yourself like, I'd have to uh, allow myself plenty of time to get where I'm going. So like that, you know what I mean? Like if I had to go back to Zanesville, you know, I would be like, hey, I'll give me a couple hours, and I have to fucking go get you know put some gas in the <laughs> tank and then fucking roll back. It was just. I don't think it would be. I don't think it'd be conducive. Actually, now I think about it, I don't know. That's a good one. What would you pick? Mine is. Everyone's like, oh, you know, get get a Ferrari or whatever. Mine, yeah. mine. A vanilla Honda. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, it'd Honda. actually be like a mid to late, like six, uh, like sixties to mid to early seventies, Mini Cooper right hand drive pickup. Mm. And Interesting. You're like, and you're like pickup. It's probably like the size the size of this of, of this desk. Right. It's tiny, but. Uh, oh, what, what the fuck did you say? My desk this desk is too tiny for you. No, I'm just saying. But that it is the size of your awesome. dream car. It is. That's right. So that was a backhanded compliment. It was like you're that, welcome. That, that was. <laughs> it was like females when they're like, you know, I t- I typically don't like uh, I don't like p- uh, fat women in purple shirts, but you pull that off. You know, it's like it's a compliment, but it's also not. I. Have a relative who's Who awesome that? At, at that. Really? Yeah. You just want to smack in the mouth. Well, I don't want to say say that. Right. Because you're you take the high road. Try to. Yeah, I appreciate. Try that. to in a lot of things. Well, I think my dream car is. It's kind of as cheesy as it's not even cheesy, but it's just kind of boring. Is I love Dodge Ch- Dodge Challengers. I love Dodge Challengers, and I want one so oh, they're, bad. They're great. Cars, like even the newer like. ones, but I hear so many nightmare stories. About the transmissions for Chryslers, really, and that kind of like turns me off. But if uh, Dodge Chrysler wants to send me one, I'd be happy to test it out and give a good review. So, anyways, that was just a little like so two, two, two Dodge. Two. We'll take two Dodges. Yeah, so that's probably my dream car. I really want one of those. I mean, I'll probably gonna get one eventually. But like, I love the older ones, obviously. But I love oh, yeah. the new. I ones mean, too. I mean, the classic cars. You can't beat any of those classic cars. No. I love the muscle cars, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, too, about the new muscle cars is, like, I don't think, like, Mustang a little bit somewhat, but, like, I don't think, like, the Camaros even look like a muscle car anymore. It looks like a sports car. Right. You know, I feel like the Challenger is, like, the one that still looks like a muscle car the most. Right. But that would be my answer for that. Yeah. Cars are, cars are, I mean, if I'm terrible with cars. First of all, I have no... Mechanical skills. Whatsoever. Oh yeah, me either. My uh, bro- brother, he's buying and selling cars all all the all, right. all the time, and he did, he's on his third like vehicle in the past like six months. Oh, but geez. he knows how to like but he, he like fixes them up, and he and he buys yeah. like the high performance like, like shit whatever. that turn yeah. And I was like, dude, my car like didn't cost me much. It's paid off. Yep, I can buy I, I can buy a new one for what you paid right for your and keep my old one right yeah and so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, uh, I wish I did have. So these are the kind of questions that you get to ask yourself when you're delivering mail all day. Oh, yeah. It's just like, you, yeah. Kind of like, okay, here, 
a another, you got like another one. one here, right? You wrote a couple of these down. Yeah, I yeah, I want to hear them. Um, so everybody has has a celebrity crush, right? Yes, uh, I, would, I would think, right? You'd have a normal to. person, yeah. is. unless you're weird. <laughs> uh, so. And so I, I was, I was like think, think, thinking, because I always had, had like one, one celebrity crush. Yeah. Crush. Yep. Yeah. Oh wait, I know who it is. I I know who it is. To prep before you start this question. Okay. We started talking about this earlier, and as we do every time, somebody, I said we'll, we'll say we'll, we'll talk about. We we're like we'll talk about it in the podcast. Right. Um, you told me that you just lost yours. Yes. And I was like, oh, she must have died. <laughs> But now that I remembered who it is, I know why you lost it. But go on. Yeah, so. Your celebrity crush. I like to hear, hear, hear your guess. Kate Beckinsale. Boom, got yeah, it. It's Kate Beckinsale. You always loved Kate Beckinsale when the yeah. Underworld and, movies were and, out. And the thing is, it, like, it wasn't, because everybody always assumes, like, the Underworld Kate, Kate right. Beckinsale. Right, right. But it wasn't for me, just that. For me, it was the movie Click. Yeah. That was yeah, the version. You, cause, well, that was because you realized this. Mo- I could make her a mother. I could. She's yeah. motherly in this. Yeah, she's I like, could see what our lives would be would be like together. She was just un- just. She seemed like just a normal hot chick. Yeah. And I was like, yes. And now. Yeah. Pete Davidson. Like, what is okay? Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Are you talking now, about old butthole eyes? Now, he looks like he has butthole eyes. Right. Everyone on the internet's like he's got butthole eyes. Granted, I'm not much better. Well, no, but, but him, but like, yeah, it's like Dude, he must be a big dick swinger. Uh, that's yeah, so he's got he's got that BDE energy. BDE energy. Yeah, well, bi- big dick energy. He's got that. Big, that's that's about that's what it is. He carries himself that way. Apparently, there's uh, a nickname like floating around. Um, yeah. What about you? Mine. Okay, so mine's a weird one too. I have okay. My original one was Kate Winslet. Okay. I always had a thing for Kate Winslet. I didn't have a thing for Kate Winslet, Titanic Kate Winslet. Right. But I had like um like Revolutionary Road with Leo okay. Kate Winslet. Right. But I think now it would be Helen Mirren. I'm a Dame Helen Mirren guy. She is smoking hot for her age. Yeah. And if you look at her younger, she's even she's even hotter. And um that would that would be my pick. I think old Dame Helen Mirren and Jamie Butler together, that's a power duo. Right. Yeah, that would be my pick, though. That's not your typical answer, though, right? I don't think mm. most people would be picking Helen Mirren. Right. But I'm fine with that. Keep her to myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's one question. But, yeah, old fucking Pete Davidson, he ruined, oh, he ruined that for right. you. Because now it's yeah, just it's like, like, what? It's like, what am I doing now? broad C in him. I mean, all power to, to him. All power to him. And... and and I would think that it, you know it's it's like it goes back to the thing of well if you're funny you can make him laugh, sure. But he's not funny. Yes, so I'm it's not, just like so. I don't think so, he's that funny. So what's going on? But maybe he's funny in like just like this this kind of manner, like talking. You know, possibly yeah. yeah. Or maybe uh, well, Kate just got divorced, right? Or she's in the midst of finalizing yeah. divorce. A second one. Yeah, because she was married. Wasn't she married to Lynn Wiseman, the director? She left her original, well, uh, that she could be on like eight husbands now, I don't know. Right. But she left her husband during the making of the first Underworld. Right. To then marry the director of the Underworld. Right. Which I think was, I think it was Lynn Wiseman. I think, I think, think so. it's the name of the girl. Yeah. Yeah, so and then they got divorced and they have a kid together, I think, right? Don't they have a daughter? Yeah, at least at least one. And yeah. and there was some, somebody who was dating, who was dating her or something, I think. And when they saw that, was it was it Orlando Pete, Orlando Bloom or somebody? Maybe. It was somebody. Yeah, I know what you're some, talking some, about. Some, somebody said, told told like Pete, it's like, dude, that bitch is crazy. She's got some issues. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That doesn't really shock me though. I could kind of see that, right? She looks like she has a lot of baggage. Well, dude, all, uh, from living out there and running into obviously nobody that I didn't meet Kate Beckinsale, <laughs> but. Most of the, you know, most like people that are actors and actresses, they've got fucking issues. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like you almost kind of have to somewhat have issues to be an actor or an actress. You know what I mean? But that doesn't really shock me. But yeah, I was so shocked when I saw those two together. I was like, oh, what is the deal? <laughs> because he was also with somebody, he was also seeing somebody else before her. 
Aria Grande. Well, that, but then he was saw he was seen with hanging out with somebody else too. I thought, and I don't think that obviously didn't work out. I can't remember who it was. He saw somebody else briefly before Kate Beckinsale, I think. But yeah, they were they're getting all fucking cozy up at the was it Knicks game yeah. or something. Yeah, that's it. That's one I could I can't understand either. I'm not even gonna try. No, no. you just can't. But I, you know what? Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to you for losing your celebrity crush. Yeah, so now... Thanks, Kate. Now I'm trying to... You're trying to move on? Trying to move on. So you're trying to find a new one? I don't know. I'm probably past that age of trying to find a new one. No, I don't... You need to You need to live with your heart. You need to live with your heart. <laughs> and you need to open it up, and you need to allow a new celebrity in. I think that's what you need to do. I think you need to take some time, take a walk over some covered bridges, through some covered bridges... <laughs> I figured out. I watched. Speaking of which, um, I watched. I'm not a Meryl Streep fan. I don't know how you feel about Meryl Streep. I feel like she's overrated. Yep. But um, I watched the uh, Bridges of Madison County last night. Her and Clint. Her and Clint. Oh, dude, what a what a banger of a movie. <laughs> banger. It was. It's fuck. I'm not gonna lie. All right, and this does not leave here. Except for. Well, I, that's fine. I cried a little bit last night. I cried. There's at the nothing end. wrong with that. I cried at the end. I said, if this. Spoiler alert! It came out in 1995, so fuck off if this if this pisses <laughs> you off. He dies at the end, and they never get together because she already has a family, right? She can't leave her family. She has two kids. She's she's not that kind of woman. She is the kind of woman that will sleep with Clint Eastwood while they while her family's gone. But when they come back, <laughs> it's back to the normal routine. <laughs> she she gave him her necklace that her. Aunt gave her when she was seven years old when she lived in Italy. She lives in Iowa now. Uh, he gave it to her, or she gave it to him the night before he left. And then he dies. And years later, she gets a package in the mail from his attorney. And I said, if this bitch pulls out that pendant, I'm not going to be able to choke back these tears. <laughs> and sure enough, she pulled out that goddamn pendant. And I was like, I'm, I'm over this movie. And I did. I did the old man cry, where it's like, uh, it was like you yawn afterwards just to tell yourself that it, it, there are tears from yawning, or or you fake like throwing in some uh, jokes. Yeah, yeah, this oh. is uh, yeah. Oh, so that would come. Yeah, I got something in my eye, <laughs> but great movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how we got on. Oh, the cover bridge. Yeah, it's Bridges of Madison County. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But uh, you got another question? Is there another question you have? I uh, just. Couple others. All right, let's hear. Them. I want to hear these other questions. So, uh, everybody, th this one isn't. This one's just a fun thing. Sure. Uh, like, well, what is your favorite animal? My favorite animal. Um, I have two. A silverback gorilla. I love a silverback uh, gorilla because it reminds me of. It reminds me of my grand, my grandpa, my grandfather. Okay, good. I, I, you uh, started off and sounded like you were going to see your grandma. I was like, oh. <laughs> No, no. Um, it reminds me of my grandfather. I'll put up a picture of him for this so you can see. And, um, you know, the, the silverback gorilla is technically the king of the jungle, aside from my other sa second favorite animal, a fucking lion, right? I love the lion. Right. The lion king of the jungle, right? But they live in the desert. So <laughs> I don't know how that works out. Uh, <laughs> or maybe it's a tiger. No, it's a lion, right? Lion. Uh, I don't know who came up with that, but they, they fucking missed some pretty big details. What about yours? Uh, mine is a panda. Which is, yeah, I think which I remember that, too, about you. And uh, that just kind of developed and snowballed to different things. Like, when I, like my squad, when I, was, when I was in the military, we called ourselves, like, like panda. Or I like panda squad because, and I now have two two different like uh, tattoos that are panda. Well, you based. started your own company. You can call Vanilla Panda. Vanilla Panda. That would be a good. Ta that'd be a good fucking tattoo right there too. A, a panda eating a vanilla ice cream cone, bro. Well, it may. Are not you getting ready to tell me you have that? Well, it may not top the one that that, that like that I currently have. It's a panda bear holding a big gulp, with no with way. with a headphones riding a big wheel. No way. Yeah. That dead serious. That is fuck. I'm gonna have to get a picture of that. I want a picture of that. And I'll put that up too. It, but the worst thing about it, like, like I, like I can't draw. But I drew, drew this, drew this, this like thing out, and it was amazing. And then when I went to go have it done, 
they like tweaked it to make it look cartoony, and I was like, "Are you oh, sons of no. bitches?" Did they, did they show it to you before they did it? Uh, a little bit, but then they like tweaked it while they were doing it. Yeah, and she's like, "That oh. they did you dirty." Yeah, it's like, "Are you kidding me?" They did you dirty. So now, so now all all my stuff, I go to a guy. His name's guy Josh, in uh, at Empire, in uh, Newark. Okay. It's called Empire Tattoo. Yeah. Okay, Empire Tattoo, Josh. Hey, uh, that dude is amazing. Cause, cause like, I was getting two two sleeves done at uh, the same time. Yeah, they look like, good. I like it. Like, it's like basically, and the one, the guys I done. He's done some other work for for, for me before, and he's mm-hmm. really good. But he, if you go, if you don't give him hundred percent of what you're out wanting, right? He's that's, it, 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 there's not much creativeness. Yeah, Josh, the other guy, the one at a uh, Empire. You go in there and you're like, I'm thinking about this, and he's like, Okay, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this. I'm gonna do the lighting of this and do the shading of that, and then the right. colors, and it's just like, you can tell he just gets it, and yeah. it's like, Oh my goodness! And that's what you want when you're finding a tattoo artist. You know what I mean? It's like somebody that's gonna make you feel comfortable, one. Yeah. But then also, like, if their artistic mind is not in line with what you want, right. then it's you. You always kind of go in going, oh, I hope they don't. Right fuck this up you know what I mean well that's cool you got one more question one more let's do one more question one more uh this one is more for you because I just know you okay uh and what would be your preferred era to live in because I know Mm. because because you see always have seemed to be more comfortable being somebody else sure. at a different time than right, right, right. than, than like being you right yourself. now. Yeah, I was, so. yeah, I was the birth of that one ca- the one character I did. Oh wait, I guess it, the early stages. I used to do the uh, the Jesus wig and go out as Gator Burnell. It's my alter ego, and it gave me a, it gave me an excuse to get fucking hammered and not have to be responsible for my actions. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, God, that's a good question. So I'm like, okay, so in this era, I would be like, what, my 20s or where I am, like how old I am now? I would have to say, it, at one point, it would have been the 60s, but I don't think I would have been able to uh, vibe with like the limitations in the 60s. Like, to, obviously, towards the end of the 60s, it was a right. lot more freer, but I would have to say the 70s, for sure. I like the vibe of the 70s. You know, it's like also cool in the 70s, like any kind of office job you had, it was like completely okay for you to just be like... You want a drink? Like, they were just making glasses right. of scotch at fucking, hey, Brian, it's fucking 11 a.m. on <laughs> Tuesday. We have a business meeting in fucking an hour. It's like, oh, it's, let's go have a glass of scotch. <laughs> now you did it. They'd be like, the fuck are you doing? Get like, your get shit. Out. Yeah, get your shit and go. Uh, so it probably have to be 70s just because it's more relaxed. And it also seems to me that there was so much drug usage at the in the early part of the 70s and the late part of the 60s. That like the mid to late seventies was like a hangover, like the drug <laughs> hangover, right? People were just like, oh, I don't get, just give me a drink or something. I need to like, fucking. What did I do last? Yeah, night? that's wait basically. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What year is this? Yeah, that's basically. Yeah, that's basically what mid seventies are. It's like from about seventy three to seventy like nine was like just the hangover. You know, like seventy nine they start coming out of it and they're like, let's fucking party again. And then you get the eighties. <laughs> let's do fucking cocaine and. Tease our hair. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's basically what it, I don't know, that's how I feel. I, I would probably be the 70s, though. I just like the like the laid-back kind of vibe of it. What would you pick? Uh, again, being vanilla. You, the uh, 50s? No, I actually, I actually, actually like what it is I'm like now. like the 1920s, eh? Actually, it's like, like she's like, like the way thin things are. I mean. You like it now. You can't beat right now. I mean, that's, great. Well, that's there, true. There is you some literally can't beat right now because we are in right now. Right. But, like, the technology that we have for everything. Yeah. Well, we're, is, at, we're that's a crazy thing. I was talking to somebody else about this the other day. Is the, our technology right now, like, you know, like my generation and, like, you know, when we, like, we grew up in the boom of technology. Yeah. Like, we're the first people to adapt and literally adjust our lives to what technology is. You know, computers. It's like, I'll be able to tell my kids one day, like, be like, Dad, check that out. If I have kids, that's, that's a big toss-up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
He'll be like, Dad, check out my check out my fucking implant in my hand. You know, they'll be like, Oh, you know what? Can you get a Zanga page on that thing? And no, you can't, because I did. I got a Zanga page. Fucking <laughs> nineteen. Zanga. Yes, I had friends sign my guest book. Can they sign your guest book? No, they can't. So it's like we literally like MySpace was like the a big thing when it came out and like it just just fell off. Right? Right. And it sounds like Facebook and Instagram and those things are massive, right? right. And it's like one day, it was a couple weeks ago, they were like updating Facebook and Instagram, and they were down. Right. People were losing their fucking minds. Oh, people were like, yeah. Like, what, what, are we, what are we supposed to do on the internet if we don't have Facebook or Instagram? It's like, that's how big these things are. It is also, it's it's such a bad thing having that that, yeah. that crutch. Yeah, it is. Where it, it, it is an addiction where, you, like, you're not even meaning or wanting to do anything like on like on your phone right you still get on it and you're just flipping well it's like i also shit. realized too like i was driving somewhere one time and i had you know my gps my phone died and i thought what the fuck what the fuck am i gonna do <laughs> how did anyone get anywhere with a phone like i don't know how, where the fuck i'm supposed to go it's like i can't go if i went in somewhere it's like hey you guys have a map they'd be like what are you fucking stupid a map what do you need to you have a fucking phone, but that's how much you like rely on shit. My uh, mother went to went went to a uh, a wedding a couple, couple weeks ago, and uh, my mother printed out directions on how to get map there. Quest. She map quest them. Map quest exactly. Yep. Yep. Uh, so then she like brought it up on her uh, phone, and it's like oh, you know it's it's a right here and everything, and it's like just press the. Start button. She goes, what do you mean, the start button? The it's start like, button, yeah. Just the button that says, just, get directions, start. Yeah. Like, And she never realized that, that because she still got, got, like, directions. Right. Like, actually, like, print, printed them out. And and when I was leaving Alaska, I had to drive. I, well, I underwater, drove back. underwater is probably the direction. Well, yeah, you don't, you don't get that, driving that, underwater. that like, so service at yeah. all. So, avoid, uh, avoid the rocks down right. here. Yeah, it's probably really tough uh, to read those. So I driving through Canada, I wasn't gonna have international like ser- service or right. whatever because I didn't feel like pay- paying for it. So I printed it out, printed out my directions. It was like a giant book to, to, trying to get from. Yeah. you had that it that, a, that a five thousand. You had it in a from, fucking binder. And so, <laughs> and there were, and there were times where I'm I'm like driving and I'm on some kind of like Lord of the Rings quest right where I'm up on this mountain and everything yeah. and there's a giant highway which is right here and there's I'm, a sign and, that says Mordor to and the I'm left. like I'm like what the hell like why am I here and you see like these signs wild horses wild like wild anything and it was just like all these signs for all this shit and I'm on this mountain just driving through all this all this shit in this interstate that was right beside me the when, whole time just yeah. And he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, you suck. Like, what, like, what am I doing here? You're scenic route, man. That fucking interstate probably wasn't there when the fucking they brought the maps. You know <laughs> <Right>. what I mean? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Well, hey, man, this has been fun. It's been good to catch up with these 10 fucking years right. since we've seen each other. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to do another one. We'll have to do another one. We'll have to get Chris, our other buddy Chris that we used to work with. I haven't seen him good. for about 10 years either. He's we'll have to do kid, him. Kid number two now. Yeah, he is. They just had they just had another yeah. kid. Congratulations to them, by the way. Um, yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime. Here, but I appreciate it. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Next week we will do episode number four. Take care.